and of course we provide electricity for our kids to be able to read. And within one year, this grew to over 200,000 customers. It was phenomenal and amazing to me because I couldn't imagine that Nigerians could embrace that and that goes to show to us that we have an endemic problem in the country. And with this, it gave me a conviction that this is where we have to put more resources and more energy into solving. So from that time, we begin to look at how we can increase the number of customers that we're serving. We were producing our solar, we started with do-it-yourself solar systems. Because we looked at the cost of solar at that point in time, because we wanted to focus on solar, we discovered that it was expensive. At that point in time, one, one watt of solar module or solar PV cost about four US dollars. It has really come down today. So what we have to do is bring in the PVs and organize our entrepreneurs to assemble this. Some of them become entrepreneurs that eventually produce this. Then we have the next layers of entrepreneurs. These are those people that get involved in the education and sell the products to customers. And we have a system in place that eventually turn our customers as well to becoming entrepreneurs. Because 60% of what our target market, low income households, spends their money on is to provide energy to cook, for lighting, for heating, and so many other forms. So when they earn their daily wage or daily living, so they spend more than 50% of that to create energy because they are and they have to move on with life. So we found out that this is one way by which we can empower this entry to get involved in entrepreneurship. And what we have seen is we're able to develop within three years over 15,000 green entrepreneurs, we call them green entrepreneurs. These are people that we don't have any business interfacing really with the customers. And we use this pair to pair mentoring model to get across this solar system to these customers. What we found out and what has been the impetus or problem of reaching those people that are not rich today is because there is lack of education. There is no full awareness. It is easier for us to come to a conference like this and to assume based on figures that we read on my believing that this customer, this target audience, have full understanding of what clean energy or energy access is. What a poor woman needs is electricity to cook. She doesn't understand what you're talking about, about clean energy. What they need is clean electricity for their kids, I mean, is electricity for their kids to read. So we have to bring in this education. Immediately we bring in, we brought this in, he broke the barrier. And he found out that there is now more adoption from them. So through that, we've been able to get more people signed up on our program. To, be, to continue to use our energy. So going forward, since then we've continued to develop more products and reaching more customers. As of today, we have reached over 500,000 families in Nigeria below using one form of our energy and uh, solar technology or the other. Some of them are entrepreneurs that are working with us. Some of them are customers. And in uh, 2011, we started looking at, let's get the figures, let's get the data, let's go into finding out, are they still using this system? What are the challenges they are having? Those ones that are now, that have increased in their income earning power, are now getting into having a TV set at home because they need to connect news, they need to understand what is going on with all the unrest and people around issues that we have in the country. We have some of them that now want to have great situation to actually preserve what they have. The energy demand increases and that's one of the benefits of having a program that can not only sell solar systems but also monitor and work with these customers as a community. We're operating in over 30 states in Nigeria but we have data of every of our users of our energy because we need their feedback to be able to improve on those solutions that we are creating. So today, a lot of them are now have increased in their economic power. They are now able to afford other appliances 
That is why <coughs> energy is the only thing that will change the SDG. If we really need to get it right, as we finish from this, conclude from this conference, and we are thinking of reaching or generating some megawatts, understand that, that after three months, that energy demand increases from what it used to be. So as our lives improve, as poor people, we also have aspirations. We also want to get better. We listen to other people, what they have, we also want to have it. And that was what we discovered. And now we've started our off-grid, mini grid solar systems. This one is running on PRC go that you don't need to acquire the solar system itself. So we also found out from what we've gotten from our model that customers should focus on the energy alone that they need to run their home or part their business. While companies, businesses, investors can invest in the infrastructure, the government will partner to invest in the infrastructure and just allow customers to do so. We started a decentralized mini grid system and we are still focusing on this same group that we've been working with. Because it's just moving them from one level of the economic status to the other. So it's still the same population, still the same people. So today, we now have a prepared system like we have here. This one is not using the mobile technology as we have with MCOPA. Because we also need to understand how technology transfer works. What works in one region or one country might not immediately work in another. So you need some tweaking to really understand the thinking of your people, the mindset, where they are coming from, what exactly they want. Just like example, in the cook stoves market that we also work in, in our own market, Nigerians have been used to kerosene, they've been used to fire with charcoal because no other forms of clean energy. So if you are going to bring a new form of energy, you must understand where they are coming from. What they need is to cook, not really the energy. So education has to come in before you introduce the other one. So as of today, our mini grid system is first of all focusing on entrepreneurs and businesses. We have a lot of micro businesses that are not running their business more than 200, 300 watts, kilowatts, um, I say watts of electricity every day. And these people know, have no other forms of running their business than to use a purpose when you go generator, which costs them about 1,500 naira, that's about $10 every day to run their business. And you say, for a month, they are spending close to $3,000, is it $3,000 now? $300 to run this same business every, every month. They are able to pay $10 a day because they run their business and from what they are able to make that same day, it's okay for them to spend $10 to pay for energy. On their burning fossil fuel, they're not getting anything back. Six months down the line, they have to replace the generator. So what we have done with our mini grid, off-grid system, because they don't have any national grid connection, is to create this same mini grid solar system for them and charge them on pay as you do. It's using a token. So from your phone, you can just send out a code to a particular number, then the digit comes on your phone and you can key that in and you run that for as long. If it's one dollar you have, you purchase it. If it's two dollars, you purchase it. So we've run that for some time and we've looked at it. Most of them that spent ten dollars before, they are just spending about four dollars today, every day, to still run the same business. So what I've stated is innovation. We need entrepreneurship, we need partnership, we need support from those people that believe in helping advancing this mission for us to actually make the change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for